One of the first things that we as speech pathologists do when we meet a patient is we conduct an assessment, right? We, we try to see what's wrong. Right. So what do we as um, white SLPs especially need to know when assessing a Black patient? I think that there are a couple of things to keep in mind when assessing uh, a Black stroke survivor. First is, and I talk about this a lot, uh, we have our two types of assessment that we often use. We have our clinician reported outcomes that are more impairment based that help us as speech language pathologists understand what we need to improve. And then we have patient reported outcomes. And so I'll talk about those two separately as both uh, types of assessment warrant different types of consideration. And so when we think about language-based assessments that are clinician reported, as a white SLP, you have to make sure you're considering dialectal differences in performance. We have a lot of research already out as far as what characterizes as African-American English, what some of those um, features of that, that dialect are. And so making sure that when we're, for, the, for example, using the Western aphasia battery, that when we're looking at repetition, and the individual might be omitting a plural on the end of the word, uh, understanding that that could be related to a dialectal variance and not necessarily the disorder. Or, or when we're looking at spontaneous speech, before we're quick to judge grammatical structure, making sure that the, this person with aphasia um, isn't using a grammatical structure that coincides with their their dialect. The other thing with patient reported outcomes, they're so huge. And so the reason why patient reported outcomes are really important to this population is because it gives us insight into what the individual desires to do socially and some of what they may be experiencing from an environmental standpoint. And so I really think that it's important that we're getting this insight in from the individual by using both sets of assessments during our assessment process. Right, and I love, um, earlier you called it a clinician reported outcome and a patient reported outcome and how we can uh, use both of those. And we have to use both of those if we're gonna get the full picture. Right, right. And with even within those, you know, the next piece that we know of is the behavioral observations. And so when we think about assessment, there are really three things that we have to make sure that we're taking into account within this population, that clinician reported outcome, that patient reported outcome, and then our own behavioral observations. Um, I shared before how, um, you know, we look at different things related to turn taking and cognition and um, eye contact and things of that nature, motivation. And so I think that it's important when we're considering some of these things like eye contact, for an example, before labeling it as poor or the patient's inability to perform these things, making sure that we're taking into context um, the patient's history and the patient's age and the generational differences that might be a part of that assessment process, meaning it's an older patient with a younger clinician um, in, a, in our field, a younger white clinician, making sure that we're taking into account all of this within the diagnostic process. Absolutely. Yeah. And we can't know the difference if we don't inform ourselves about what are the features of African-American English? What are the cultural norms? What, what has this older Black man been taught? about making contact with a white woman, right? Mm -hmm. Even being okay with asking some of those questions that might be uncomfortable for us. So for an example, Mr. H, I noticed that you didn't make eye contact with me throughout this part of the assessment. Is that normal for you? Would you have done that pre-stroke or is that something new? Because the key point is that we're only supposed to really be working on things that are now disordered because of the stroke. And so, you know, of course, you're not asking like, were you taught when you were younger not to make eye contact, but that could be insight into him saying, oh no, I never really make eye contact. Great, great point. Yeah. 